Okay, remember that they're changing my voice. And obviously those who rebel against God, their spirit is very sissy. Like emos look like masculine men to the, compared to them, right? They just are not using their heads. I mean, trying to coerce me and trying to get me to change my message. I mean, they're, they're far out there. So it says, The righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. Verse 17, Food gained by fraud tastes sweet, but one ends up with a mouth full of gravel, right? Grave, right? Grave ale. Okay, we've been talking about them going down to the grave time and time again. Is it a coincidence that that word is called gravel? And it starts with grave, and there's ill, mentally ill. If you look at the statues of El, the Canaanite deity, he looks sick in the head, right? He looks like a, like the Riddler in one of his forms, like, you know, a crazy kind of little guy who's like, yay, I'm, I'm important, right? It, it's pretty, pretty, pretty disgraceful. I don't know why the, his family line chose to kind of deify themselves, you know, and then kind of be pranksters. And, and it, you know, the... It, if every every step of the way they made a mistake there um so again going back to the righteous leads blameless lies blessed are their children after them people pick grapes from the vines right not from thistles okay or thorn bushes right same with figs right you pick it from the fig tree you don't pick them from thistles or thorn bushes neither do people look for a faithful person who's in a culture of betrayal who comes from a long line of of traitors right they need to be redeemed right i'm the righteous one right and if they pretend my goodness if somebody's pretending to be righteous you should see it in them that's at this point in history at least after i'm gone they should just know they're sealed in hell but you know after my flesh dies but at this point everyone i've ever come across who pretends to be righteous who isn't you can tell you can tell they're playing the game, right? They're a Freemason, right? They're a preacher in church, right? They've accepted the boundaries of the corporate state and it sticks out like a, thor, uh, like a sore thumb. Okay. So we get to Proverbs 21.1. In the Lord's hand, the king's heart is a stream of water that he channels toward all who please him. So in the one of these videos before, I think it was the last video or something, we talked about how the king's favor, okay, is like a rain cloud okay his favor right when you're on the you know it, it, it is uh like the dew on the grass okay so it's proverbs 16 15 uh, his favor is like a rain cloud in spring proverbs 16 excuse me proverbs 19 um 12 okay and you see that his favor is like a dew the dew on the grass and then it has the, um, implications on fertility a lot of people in the area uh, spoke of things in those terms right when they superimpose their religions on the royal african falcon martial Art order they tended to speak of things in terms of nature and fertility and the grass and the earth and so on and so forth and those who were gay they would describe the earth differently like gaia gaia right in greece because they were gay they wanted to play um to their shame mind you they wanted to play mother earth as a gay person and, and that's part of the world's serpent right that's why a serpent is a, a phallic symbol right as they say no offense to lgbt community that the devil is gay again i don't consider chastising someone for their sexual orientation to be wrong or sin or hurtful okay um but but the people on tiktok probably do the state does so on and so forth so i'm not going to directly kind of get into that so i don't break the rules on tiktok okay but it's safe to say that you know that you should follow um, what is morally precise in regards to sexual orientation. We'll say, okay, so where were we here? Because uh, again, it's just sexual orientation, right? If a gay person, like if I told a gay person, hey, stop being gay so you can go to heaven, that's not me hating on them, right? You know, I mean, I haven't you know, have been on a date and you can imagine it and everything that entails, right, for like six years, right? So by doing the right thing, I've been kept from a heterosexual romantic relations, relationship. You see what I'm saying? So how the hell are they going to tell me, hey, you, you're telling these people to stop doing their sex life and, and to be morally precise, and then magically that's wrong, right? What the hell? These people got together to tell females to shun me for doing what's right, okay? And they have no evidence that that's the right thing to do. And they have no viable counter-argument uh, to the argument of the Bible. No offense to anyone again, this says homosexuality is a sin. All right, so where are we here? So Proverbs 21, verse Seven. So I'm even the son of two doctors, right? The son of two doctors, Christ, the top martial arts, trying to help everyone, including the gay community, and they they want to censor me or something. It's just outrageous. All right. 
a person like 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 if you're gay that you shouldn't have the option to not be gay right that that's fucking crazy okay that that's that is sick it's like some serial killers in the gay community abusing the hell out of them all and they're they're crying they're like hey they're making us do it and they say hey you know tell them that you're oppressing them right you go i'm saying all right a person so going down to verse seven a person may think that their own ways are right but the lord weighs the heart okay so in the lord's hand the king's heart is a stream of water that he channels to those who please him and the lord weighs the heart so you know king charles and all these people they're not right with god right no offense to them other than the fence God attended, but they're not right with God. So when God raised the heart, they say, okay, why are you cheating the king of kings if you're really a king? Okay, so either you're a beast who's uh, exerting a kind of primitive brute authority, okay, whether you have advanced technology or not, or you are a king of God that obeys the king of kings, which is me. All right. Um, and so God raised the heart, and we see in... Um, in a different scripture, uh, going back to 16, right? It says, the Lord weighs the motives. The Lord weighs the motives. He weighs the heart. And we'll eventually get to the scripture where it says people are tested by their praise. So as God is saying, okay, who are you praising? If you say to me, you know, imagine the parable of the two sons that are sent to, to work. You know, one of them said no and, and went to the vineyard or wherever and worked. And the other one said yes and didn't go. You see what I'm saying? So... The one who did his work, who praised the father and, and the instruction and the principles of being prudent and so on, is the one who did, went, didn't, did the work. So a bunch of females say, hey, I think you're cute. Or, you know, let me say, I'll send you my news. Or, Dada, this is not, this is mere lip service, right? You know, their, their heart doesn't have zeal for the Lord. Or will say, submit, like it says in Psalm 45. And it says in Proverbs 11, 22, why a female who rejects, a beautiful female who rejects good sense is like a gold rings in a pig's snout. Hey, they don't show sense. They don't show discretion. They don't show judgment. They don't show wisdom. What have you. So they're just, they're just, they're, you know, they're, they're like a piece of fruit on a tree that it should be legal for me to snatch up because all they're going to do, like it says in Proverbs is multiply the unfaithful. And when you add the element, there's a bunch of white Jewish and LGBT supremacists and whoever else who would say, you know, from our point of view, it's the other way around. It just proves me right more because they increase their wickedness by trying to confuse this very straightforward issue and discussion. Can you imagine having to explain that to people who are just some kind of knuckle-dragging fools with technology? It is unbelievable. When in verse 14, a gift given in secret soothes anger and a bribe concealed in the cloak pacifies great wrath. This is one of the few scriptures that have the word cloak in it, at least in Proverbs. That's not a coincidence. Now, is it telling you to bribe a righteous person? No. You have to interpret it in the boundaries of righteousness and justice. It's, it's, it's the formula they're using, right? Where figs are good or evil. A bribe can be good or evil. There's different applications. What are the applications that work? If you're going to try to take on Goliath, and you say, okay, I take him with, I could take him with a sword or sling or spear or club or hammer or whatever. You're going to do an application that works. And so it is with scripture. What is the application that works here? Okay. You're supposed to obey God through me. And try to repent by submitting yourself and everyone else that you can to me. And if along the way some attractive female is with you, then that's that's the kind of gift that they're talking about. The quote-unquote, and it's not the same as a freaking immoral bribe, mind you, the quote-unquote bribe. Okay, it's like someone joking around and saying, hey, can I, can I buy you lunch? Okay, to bribe you to hear me out. And they're kind of joking around, right? But it's really harmless. Yeah, it's a harmless bribe. It, uh, excuse me, bribe. Even the word bribe is like the word bride, okay? What are the odds? And, and it says B, you have the B and the D are the differences, right? What are the odds? That's a coincidence. Was it a coincidence with the word gravel, right? That they, at the end, one ends up with a mouthful of gravel when they, they pursue ill-gotten gains, right? No, grave and gravel. Okay, so they're trying to kind of make it so I sound manic or something, so I'm going to have to kind of you know, stop soon. They're fuming me, right? And that goes back to, we'll get to the perfume, right? Perfume is a play on words for rape, fume, right? You're actually being fumed. Now, what are they fuming you with, right? You have to really ask yourself in this age of advanced technology, what all is in the perfume? I'm not saying don't buy the perfume. I'm not saying do buy the perfume, but I am saying consider what the heck is in it and anything else, you know? Not to go crazy and be paranoid, but you have to be sober. You have to be vigilant. The person who tells people not to be vigilant because they'll be called paranoid is called a dumb fuck.